Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Catherine Gunter, and I'm the Director of State Government Affairs for, our, for the Entertainment Software Association, and I'm here today to respectfully oppose LD 1977. Hopefully on the plane ride here from Seattle, she had time to rewrite her script so it doesn't say that the game plays the console. Uh, ESA is the trade association that represents companies that publish computer and video games for an assortment of consumer devices, which include game consoles. The makers of all three consoles, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, are members of ESA. We recognize that this is an important public policy issue, and we appreciate the opportunity to share the video game industry's perspective. In advance of the testimony, here is my, my formal letter. Um, I would like to emphasize that game console makers are committed to providing consumers with repairs that are affordable, quick, and secure. Frankly, our industry doesn't make any money off of a broken console. Frankly, our industry doesn't make any money off of a broken console. Well, let's see if that's true. Let's check the Entertainment Software Association's website and see who your members are and see if any of the members on your website are companies that make a direct profit from selling people hardware if it's difficult to fix their old hardware. So here we go. It says Entertainment Software Association. We are ESA, members. Let's see if any of these companies are companies that make money if they sell you a console. Oh look, Microsoft, they'll sell you a console. Oh look, Nintendo, they'll sell you a console. Oh look, PlayStation, another company that sells hardware that will sell you a console. Under what circumstances would I be more likely to purchase new hardware? When it's easy to repair my old hardware? Or when it's painful to repair my old hardware? Hmm. I wonder if that's a proper statement or a disingenuous one. I'll let you be the judge of that. Um, therefore, we offer a variety of options if your device needs to be repaired. Additionally, all of three of our companies that make these consoles offer after-warranty repairs just to maintain that their, their goods are in good working order. Um, video game publishers rely upon our secure media environments of the game console to safeguard work from piracy and to help prevent piracy, video game software and hardware have security features that are built into them known as technical protection measures or essentially a digital lock. Um, these prevent the, the play of unauthorized games. Put simply, if you play a game that is not authorized on a game console, the firmware will pick up that it is bootlegged and it will not play that copy. So it only plays legitimate copies. Um, these digital locks really help to create our secure media platform. We believe that sharing our hardware schematics, sensitive diagnostic information, tools, and security-related reset codes with unvetted third parties would compromise the security of our entire platform, and this would harm both console makers and game publishers. Um, as once the console is mod modified uh, and the, the locks are disabled, any number of illegally copied games can be played, making the threat of piracy exponential. I think it's incredibly important to point out that the actual language in the bill states specifically that we do not want access to anything that would allow us to break a digital lock. Knowing the value of a resistor is not going to break a digital lock. The ability to purchase a fan does not break a digital lock. People are tired of having to send the console back to the manufacturer, wait several weeks, and then get it back completely wiped. This is about being able to repair the console you have, not piracy. If we're talking about piracy, the ship has sailed on that one. There is no right to repair right now as it exists. That legislation does not exist. However, there are many websites online instructing you on how to crack all of this stuff so that you can play video games for free. When it comes to piracy, that, that ship has sailed. This has nothing to do with independent repair. You already lost the battle there. The thing that is important here is to ensure that the legislators understand that we are not asking for anything that will crack a digital lock. If we're able to purchase a fan, that's not going to crack a digital lock. Knowing what the resistors or inductor values are in the image circuit is not going to crack a digital lock. There is a clear-cut difference between these two, and trying to conflate them as if they are the exact same thing is precisely the type of misdirection that they are relying on so that they believe that this is an issue about security, security, piracy, danger, the children, rather than what it's actually about, being able to fix the console so that people can reuse their old one rather than purchase a new one, which in spite of her misdirection, her clients, 
people who are members of her organization will profit from. A spokesperson for PlayStation, Nintendo, and Microsoft telling you that they don't make money off of a broken console would be akin to a Mercedes dealership telling you that they don't make money off of a broken car. You are too smart to be manipulated like that. Um, finally, I just want to note that uh, any state effort to make unlocking these tools available to unauthorized repair shops is at odds with federal law. Um, the digital locks are obviously necessary and directly related to combating piracy. So in 2018, the U.S. Copyright Office said there's no evidence to support the inclusion of consoles under a general right to repair rule. And the latest Digital Millennium Copyright Act actually made it illegal to traffic tools that can crack the digital locks. So in closing, I just want to say that the vitality and the success of the game console business is dependent upon a trustworthy platform. And if the platform is compromised, which we think it would be, if uh, Right to Repair forced console makers to open up our firmware, it could really hurt consumers, publishers, and game consoles. Thank you so much for allowing me the time to testify. Thank you, Ms. Gunter. Do I have any questions from the committee? Representative Stekas? So far. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> could you, uh, pri prior to having these, these, being able to put these locks into the games, mm -hmm. can you give us a rough idea of, of the cost to business that pirating, um, that, that these things stopped, uh, the, co the, the cost of the pirating? Sure, I don't have a number, but I can speak anecdotally. Um, for us, as soon as the console comes out, people start to immediately try to crack it so they can start playing games. Um, the PS4 has been broken into, and Sony does a number of software updates to kind of prevent that circumvision. The same has happened with the new Nintendo Switch. It's only been out for about three years. So I can't speak to an exact number, but if that, if the technical protection lock information is distributed onto social media, there's detrimental costs because then anybody can take that, put it in a Reddit stream, and that could lead to millions and millions of dollars worth of, you know, dollars lost for companies. The video game industry is a 36, $43.6 billion industry just in the U.S. Thank you. Hopefully that helps. I just said that right to repair has nothing to do with this because that ship has sailed. When it comes to piracy, that's already happening. That's been happening for decades, and it is still happening right now without repair shops having any access to anything that they requested. And if you didn't believe me when I said it, then perhaps you can believe her when she says it. She just defeated her own argument. Her argument is that if right to repair passes, we're going to have all these problems with picking of the digital locks that are so secure, but these digital locks are not secure. Because even when people don't have access to any of that, they're already picking these locks because they're put together terribly. And again, if you look at the bill language, it clearly states that we do not want access to anything that can be used to pick digital locks. But as I said, those digital locks are very insecure and already being picked by people around the country because they're just not very good. And do you see the video game industry going away? Do you see mass layoffs? Do you see that no, no company making video games anymore for any of these platforms? No, it's pure fear-mongering. Any other questions? I actually have a quick one. Yeah. I was listening to NPR last night, and they were talking with a young father, I think, in Australia who had a child with disabilities, and he created his own custom console mm -hmm. um, controller for her to be able to play the games. Would that also void the warranty as a aftermarket product or I, I don't actually know the answer to that question. I don't think that it would because mm -hmm. it's creating something new, so you would have its own new platform, but I can look into that and get back to you. Yeah, it was just an interesting I, yeah. it's not something I thought of a controller where it's not actually, you know, pirating the game and still yeah. working with the correct console, but it's like an accessory kind of thing. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure about accessories. I know some of the other point the other parts within the game console, such as the fan. Mm -hmm. The fan speaks to the firmware, so if it's put in incorrectly, it can melt down the count the console. Yeah. So I'm not sure about controllers, but I can look into that and get back to you. That'd be great. It was just yeah. something that came up that I never thought of. So thank you, Ms. Gunter. <laughs>